All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. This is Dr. E from today's date is June 23rd, 2021, and I'm saying a by Yeshem, Yeshua HaMashiach, Baruch Atah Adonai, for now and forever. So obviously, if you are listening to the sound of my voice, you were blessed to see yet another day, and all praise is due to the Most High God of Israel. All right, well, before I get started with today's lesson, let me just say, to all my uh, new and old subscribers alike, make sure you, when you hit the subscriber uh, button, you click that, that notification bell and select all, so you'll be notified of all of my new videos um, that I upload uh, with Shabbat service. Uh, and I also have a, a, a new segment I, I just recently implemented called Real Talk Tuesdays, okay? Definitely check that out. Um, uh, the first one, I, th I think, went pretty good. But I don't think a lot of people were notified about it, um, so definitely check that out. Um, it, it's a, it's a, I did it to just kind of kind of spark some 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 fire, you know. Uh, keep the keep the interest going with the channel. I, mean, I have a lot going on. I do a lot here with um, the lessons uh, and Shabbat service. I mean, you know, I, I do. I have a lot going on, but I feel that the Real Talk Tuesdays is going to add another dimension. We can all just kind of proverbially let our hair down. And uh, just talk about things going on, you know, in in the world and and uh, and in our lives, you know, relationships, you know, entertainment, sports, you know, just just we have we have that one day I set aside to to do that. So so everyone, please check that out. Check out my episode one. Um, and I was talking. I talked about a couple things, but uh, one of the main things I was talking about was how the uh, the fans of Beyonce shut down, shut down, or try to shut down Trick Daddies restaurant page because he said something that they didn't like he said Beyonce couldn't sing and so they went to his his place of business and gave him a bunch of negative reviews which I thought was really out of bounds but but um yeah check that out definitely um my uh the talk uh real talk Tuesdays episode one you guys definitely check that out and and make sure you subscribe and hit the um the notification bell and, and hit all all right um so with that said I appreciate you all I appreciate the support um, you know, uh, I, I love what I do. Let me let me say that real quick. I really do. Um, yes, it's a lot, you know, but I do it. I feel like when I'm blessed to get up and my feet hit the hit the uh, hit hit my carpet, you know, I'm blessed, right? So I keep it moving. I keep going, right? And those that actually uh, that that send thanks and 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 encourage me, you know, I appreciate that because a lot goes into what I do, and it's not as easy as it looks. Okay. Um, you know, uh, some of you who, you know, want to give suggestions, whatever the case may be, I have, a, I have a suggestion, right? Do what I do, which Google is my friend. I have, I have a lot of books and I do, I do have, I do have a lot of books, but Google is my best friend. Okay. Anything that you need to know extra about anything I present, you can Google works for you too. I promise you. I know many of you like to hear the sound of my voice, <laughs> you know, and that's cool. That's cool. I mean, you can just hit play and just. You know, listen to Dr. E do his thing, and that, that's fine. But anyone that, that, that needs anything extra outside of what I present, I, I, I suggest to you that, you know, Google works just as well for you. All right. So anyway, all that said, I hope you guys are well, your family is well, you're in great spirits and health. Um, remember, health is wealth. Um, definitely check out that, that lesson I just did a couple weeks ago. That is a really, really good um, video with the health is wealth um, lesson. Um, and then and don't forget to like and share and, and embed these videos to, you know, to get your friends to know. But I know many of you have Facebook pages and, and, you know, friends that think like you. So, you know, share, share my lessons, you know, help, help, you know, get the word out. You know, um, really, I, I have a lot of videos that, you know, have some pretty good views. But I mean, you know, they, they can be a whole lot better. Right. So let's everyone do their part to kind of, you know, get the, the message out to our people. OK. Well, today's lesson, um, I'm going to finally tackle and deal with this whole uh, Caesar or Cesar Borgia um, thing. Now, I'm going to I'm going to tackle this lesson from a from from an objective perspective, from a from a an educator's perspective. I, I'm going to present it to you all. I'm not going to I'm not going to make a final judgment either way on what's what. But we're going to look at this genetically and historically. Um, this this Roman Catholic generated image that the world has accepted and knows as as Christ Jesus is that really a man called Caesar 
Borgia. Now we all know, obviously, clearly, it's not uh, it's not Yeshua Hamashiach. So the fact is, or, or, or rather, the question is, if that man is not Christ, why why was that particular image generated um, uh, and 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 presented as as that to the world when clearly um, the Roman Catholics knew, knew exactly what the original Hebrew Israel, Israelites looked like because they. Um, destroyed the Roman, uh, they, they, they destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD. So, like, it, it's, it's really conflicting and it's, it's confusing as to why they would generate that particular image and call it uh, Christ. So we're going to look at all that and like I said, I'm going to use, the great thing about DNA and, and it's, it's, it's as powerful as it is, is, is that, you know, DNA cannot be refuted. Men lie, okay, every day. Women, women lie. But what cannot lie is DNA. Now, unscrupulous men can lie on DNA, but DNA cannot lie. DNA will tell you and reveal the truth. It doesn't matter what you've been told your whole life. It doesn't matter what you've believed your whole life. DNA does not care about any of that. It will tell you and reveal your truth, whatever that may be, right? And that's, the, that's one of the most beautiful things about it. I mean, you look every day and you see someone was, have been exonerated for a crime they didn't commit. I mean, locked up 30, 40 years and DNA says, nope, he didn't do it, you know, and and I don't think lost on me that that happens to a lot of a lot of people to look like you and I. I mean, it's just it just does. But but DNA is a powerful, powerful tool. So, you know, when it comes to that, you know, you can't dispute it. No one can dispute it. Rather, you want to accept the findings of it or not. I mean, and I hate, hate the sound cliche. It is what it is. Right. So, again, I'm going to give this lesson totally objectively as an educator would. And I'm going to present it to you and you have your um, and make up your own mind as to what's what. I'm going to present the case, present the, the lesson and you guys determine. One thing I will say before I get started is that uh, DNA never has to line up with history. History has to line up with DNA because just because something's been regurgitated over and over and over again in history does not mean that it's true. All right. So on that note, y'all know how I do. Let's get it. All right, all right. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. Uh, now, this, this, what you, what you all are looking at. This is the image um, that the Roman Catholics manufactured uh, many years ago as the image of Jesus Christ. Right now, the reason why I wanted to to set it off with this this image is because. Several reasons. Number one, one of the biggest reasons is that this particular image has probably caused more wars and more death and spread and shed more blood that could cover a, a sea, right? Um, in the in in the name or the spirit of this of this image, right? Now, the Bible tells us, you know, we're not we're not chargeable in ignorance, right? If you don't know something, you don't know, honestly. Right. So how can you charge someone something who, who, who is, is, is unaware or who just simply does not know? So now when this image was was generated, obviously, a lot of people accepted it as Christ. No one ever questioned, well, how how did this image of, of, of Christ come about? I mean, clearly no one alive or no one in the last couple hundred years have ever seen him, whatever the case may be. So where did this image come from? Right. No one questioned it. They just accepted it immediately as as the gospel. No pun intended or whatever. But and I, and I think one of the reasons why this particular image was accepted is because, well, it was easy to digest. And it was it was it was. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Well, the, the thing is, not only was this image accepted, but what they, they, they took it a step further. Right. With this particular image, they made it and they made him. Yeshua HaMashiach, well, I, I can't say Yeshua HaMashiach, I'm going to say Jesus Christ, because they made Jesus Christ a God. I, I'm going to just say that, I, I, I'll put that right there. So it was it was easy, right? The power structure throughout history has always been European men going throughout, invading, taking over, you know, pillaging, you, you name it, right? Claiming things as their own, renaming stuff, the whole nine. So... Yeah, sure. They would embrace the fact of this image 
being Christ because if Jesus Christ is God, as the Council of Nicaea put out and when they did, when they decided to make Jesus a God, because that was the that was the event that happened when they decided that Jesus Christ was a hundred percent man and a hundred percent God. Now we both know that you can't be a hundred percent in two things. That's just mathematically impossible. But that's what they decided. So yeah. Basically, Jesus Christ was white. And since Jesus Christ was white and the power structures or the powers that be at the time were white. Yeah, Jesus was white. And so are we. So uh, anyone of color or any black person would have to bow down to us because Jesus is white and we're white. So that means we're 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 better, essentially. Right. So that's how we got this image right here being. I mean, you, literally people today in 2021 really still believe that this is the image of Jesus Christ. I mean, they don't, they don't, they don't um, question anything. They don't say, "Well, wait a minute. The Bible says something different." And we're going to get into that a little later on in a, in a later segment. We're going to get in. We're going to get into what the Bible says about him biblically, scripturally, how and what Jesus uh, looked like, right? Or, or, or at least his um, his his complexion, right? So again, it, and it begs the question: How did the Roman Catholics and why did they generate this? particular image now the why is probably a little more complex than than the how but we're gonna we're gonna try to address both right but we know or or many of us know let me, let me change that many of us know and accept that what the bible says as as how it describes um christ jesus so the problem that 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 many people have that that aren't um who who, who does not look like this image is that this image was used to enslave black people. Um, so, and the problem, other than the fact that that's wrong to, to, to enslave another human being, um, it was used to keep black people uh, in bondage, not just physically, but mentally and spiritually, because they taught black people back then that black people didn't have a soul and that uh, making Jesus Christ and this image of Christ um, a white man, and to many, it it, 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 it it reeked of white supremacy, all right? Just broken down to the very last compound, okay? Straight up, you know, white supremacy, whites on top, blacks on bottom, right? The status quo. When the Council of Nicaea, and again, that was that was the event that, that, that started it all with the whole Christianity, how Christianity was born and how Jesus Christ became a God, right, from that meeting in that Council of Nicaea. From that point on, up until and we're going to get into the next segment of who of this Caesar Borgia character, because because it is believed that Caesar or Caesar Borgia was the image or prototype that the uh, the artist that painted this and generated this picture used basically as the model for this image of Christ. Who was he? Right. Um, but they said that he was no, it was no, this, this image that you're looking at, they say is basically no different than, um, that picture of the Mona Lisa. Someone, someone posed for that picture and that image was used, right? As the prototype for what Jesus Christ looked like in the Roman Catholics of all people. We're going to get into that a little later. They know the truth. It's like all these years, it's like the jokes on you because they know the truth. They do. But they've kept it hidden back when I was a, a five percenter. We call that being a part of the 10 percent, the people that knew the truth that know the truth, but keep it hidden from the 85 ers from the 85 percent, the people that are dumb, deaf and blind and have no knowledge of self and who they really are. Right. I believe that to be true. I, I, but statistically, you know, however you want to break it down mathematically, I believe that to be true. A percentage of people keep know the truth, but keep it hidden from the people who do not. So let's get into the next segment in this and let's see. Um, who who the Caesar Borgia, Borgia is, and let's see if we can't come to a uh, if you can't come to a, a, a conclusion if you haven't already. Okay, the image you're looking at now um, that is of the man known as Caesar, or some say Caesar Borgia. Okay, um, so when you're looking for a real life model for Jesus Christ. He'd be hard uh, pushed or pressed to think of a less appropriate stand in for the quote unquote Prince of Peace than Cesar Borgia. 
Um, that image you're looking at, again, is the man who many believe and theorize is the prototype or the model for how how uh, the, Ro the, the Roman Catholic image of Christ was generated. They said he was the model used, kind of like the, the Mona Lisa of, 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 of Jesus Christ, if you will, right? But they said let's 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 go into you know who this man was and let's let's get into it you know um, this is one of the most notorious members of Renaissance Italy's Italy's most not notorious dynasties. They said Caesar was cruel and he was thought to be an inspiration for the uh, Niccolo Machiavelli's satirical handbook for would-be uh, tyrants, the prince. So thanks to his father, his father was a pope. He became Pope Alexander VI in 1471. It says Caesar was made a bishop at the age of 15 and a cardinal at the age of 18. But it said at this point in history, the Pope directly ruled over a kingdom that dominated central Italy from its capital of Rome. Okay. <clears throat> and it says, though a rising star in the church, Caesar fancied himself a military man. There was one problem, though. His father had chosen that career for his older brother, Giovanni. Pope Alexander had appointed his pride and joy captain general of the church, the supreme commander of the Papal States Armed Forces. Coincidentally, in 1497, Captain General Giovanni Borgia was found floating lifelessly in the river Tiber. Cesar left the church inheriting his brother's role, titles, and wealth, plus the title Duke of Valentinosis as a gift from the Pope's staunch ally, King Louis XII of France. The family weren't exactly short of en enemies in Italy, but some suspect Caesar was behind his brother's death, perhaps even drawing the blade himself. Now, you want to talk, you know, um, being... Uh, ambitious I mean that's that's something else right there uh, you know Cain and Abel quickly comes to mind right but as further Borgia family drama comes from the fact that both Cesar and Giovanni shared a mistress uh, Sancha of Aragon the wife of a third brother Geoffrey Borgia a notorious womanizer Cesar fathered 11 known illegitimate children now before i even go any further i mean can you imagine this is the man that they used the man's image allegedly that they used to represent christ jesus like seriously i guess they figured maybe you know everyone would just accept it and not ever one day you know question it or or research it or research the truth right um because you you would think that they had that, that, that that's pretty pretty bold you know for them to 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 do that Especially considering, like I said in the beginning of the, the lesson, that the Roman Catholics of all people, they, they knew and they know what the original Hebrew Israelites looked like and essentially what Christ looked like, right? They do. And I'm going to get, we're going to get into that in a later segment. So to some of you, it's going to blow your mind. Um, but it says, as papal warlord Caesar, Mr. Borgia here, rampaged across the neighboring Italian states. While at home, anyone who stood in his way, including family and friends, was done away with. So he was a gangster. He was a thug. Uh, essentially, says when his army rebelled against him, Caesar played peacemaker. Ah, so he spoke with two tongues. Those are the most dangerous people you have to be aware of. He agreed to an amnesty and then, in bad faith, ordered all the ringleaders to be taken care of. <laughs> wow. And this very strange idea that one of the modern images of Jesus is based on Caesar originally comes from a claim made by the novelist Alexandre Dumas and picked up and expanded upon by biblical theorists. The argument goes that Jesus was originally depicted as appearing non-European because he was quote-unquote Jewish, which did not sit well with the Borgia Pope at the time. So in order to create a more European looking Jesus, Pope Alexander VI commissioned new paintings of Jesus using his illegitimate son Caesar as the model. He then allegedly ordered the destruction of all art depicting 
a dark-skinned Jesus because it definitely existed because Jesus was a dark-skinned man. Well, he ordered all those pictures destroyed, thereby popularizing one of the main enduring images of Jesus we have today, so the theory goes. Now, I don't know if that image is still on church, or they even still have church fans today, but back in the day, that image was on every church fan in every church, on stained glass windows, you name it, that 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 allegedly Caesar Borgia or Cesar Borgia's image that they use for Christ Jesus is littered all throughout in churches throughout the world to this day I believe I know definitely back in the day when I was coming up I mean we, we had the little church fans right so it says it's certainly true that images of Cesar Borgia from the period are uncannily similar to the images of Christ painted around the same time Cesar even gazes calmly off canvas in his most famous depiction. His friendship with Leonardo da Vinci may have also helped to popularize a particular depiction of Jesus Christ that echoed Cesar's appearance. Inevitably, given Cesar's reputation, they were also rumored to have been lovers. <laughs> wow. A similar theory, which has long been floating around, posits that Jesus as a quote-unquote Jewish man was previously depicted as a Middle Eastern figure until the outbreak of the Crusades made it politically unpalatable or palatable to have him resemble the enemy. One problem with this though is that the timeline doesn't make sense. The Crusades in the Middle East took place between 1096 and 1291 whereas Caesar lived between 1475 and 1507. Another problem is that it ignores the evidence. Jesus began to appear as a figure with a beard and long hair in the 5th century, and his skin tones varied across this period, largely to reflect whichever culture had created the image. But if you want to compare a painting of Cesar Borgia to a painting of Jesus Christ, look at the icon of Christ's Pan Pantocrator at St. Catherine's Monastery in Sinai. Like Cesar, Christ's Pan Pontecrator has long brown hair, a brown beard, and a noble face with defined features, a strong jawline and cheekbones. It looks every inch like the generic depiction of Jesus. Christ Pontecrator was painted on a wooden board in the 6th century, 800 years before Caesar was born. The theories are interesting to study, but as many biblical theories and hypotheses about the true image of Christ, they are short or in concrete evidence now the operative being concrete evidence now in the next segment we're going to get into and i thought it was important to set the tone for who this man was who his father was his father was a, was a pope uh you know and so when they say concrete evidence there's never going to be quote unquote concrete evidence but we have biblical evidence and from that we have genetic evidence right uh, scripture tells us what Christ looked like um, and all this Middle Eastern stuff again that's that's all a ploy because they want to take off the true connotation of what the people of that region uh, um, originally looked like but but with that being said let's get into what the Bible says number one about the original uh, Hebrew Israelites and what they look like and two uh, what Yeshua HaMashiach actually looked like and um, I name dropped this man several times throughout different uh, uh, parts of my lessons, but uh, Flavius Josephus, um, I most definitely and highly recommend you all purchasing his complete works. Um, but let me let me give some a little a little bio on who he was and what he said um, about Yeshua Hamashiach and you know what he looked like. Okay. Um, Flavius Joseph, Flavius Joseph, or Yosef, was was a was an Israelite. He was born under the name of Yosef ben Matthias and was a commander in Galilee. He fought against the Roman general um, Vespasian, but ultimately surrendered. He later defected to the Romans since he realized the futility of overwhelming them militarily, right? And he lived the rest of his life in Rome under the sponsorship of the Vespasian family, the Flavian family. He wrote antiquities of the Jews and the Jewish war or the Roman, Roman destruction of Jerusalem under the name Flavius Josephus. The Jewish war was originally written in Aramaic, 
before it was later written in Greek. And if you see that come up a lot in the later terms, because remember I said uh, the Assyrians, they got rid of, they, they literally got rid of the Hebrew language and replaced it with Aramaic. So a lot of people that are kind of still holding on to that kind of Paleolithic, I, I don't know if that's the correct term, uh, form of Hebrew spoken, like, listen, uh, you'll be hard pressed to find that or anyone that speaks the ancient Hebrew or whatever the case may be, because, uh, I mean, can you imagine that? The Hebrew language was actually replaced. It was done away with. We're not speaking that here anymore in Israel. We're all speaking Aramaic from here on. They remember in my lesson from yesterday, I said how the children of Ephraim, they, when they left Morocco, they were speaking a mixture of, of Arabic and Aramaic, yet they were children of Ephraim. So it, it, it all lines up. I'm a children of Ephraim. So it all lines up that Aramaic was a language adopted and spoken in Israel toward the, the latter part or just before or after the Roman destruction of Jerusalem. So anyway, he said, this is what he said. Uh, Flavius Josephus, <clears throat> um, in his book, The Messiah, Jesus, and John the Baptist, according to Flavius Josephus, recently discovered capture of Jerusalem and the other Jewish and Christian sources, written in 1929 in German and translated by Alexander Haggerty, Crape, Methuen, 1931. Eisler wrote as follows. At that time, there appeared a certain man of power, if it, if it, be, if it be meet to call him a man whose name is Jesus, whom certain Greeks call a son of God, but his disciples called the true prophet. Quote, he was a man of simple appearance, mature age, black skinned, short growth, three cubits tall, hunchbacked, prognoth prag prognathos, never heard that word, with a long nose, eyebrows meeting above the nose, with scanty curly hair, but having a line in the middle of the head after the fashion of the Nazarenes with an undeveloped beard. Now that's how Christ was described, the operative being black skinned. So that being said, on to the next segment. And everyone knows that the color black is extremely dark. It's the darkest color in the crayon box. It's, it's probably the darkest color in existence, the color black. In the previous segment, Christ by eyewitness account was described as black skinned, not brown skinned or not brown skin looking or light complexed or caramel or any, any of those terms, he was described as black skin. Well, what does scripture tell us? Does it line up? I think it most certainly does. Revelation 1 and 15 where the description of Christ is in the only place where he is described. It says his feet like unto fine brass as if it had burned in a furnace. And I purposely put a picture of brass burned in a furnace. What it looked like right to compare the previous segment he was described as black skin that means Christ was very dark okay there's no way around it. he was a very dark skinned man as in brass burnt in a furnace that's what it looks like okay so that lines up Christ was extremely dark so now with that being said by virtue of scripture we know that 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 image of that Roman Catholic image of Christ cannot be correct and cannot be accurate because here we have two separate sources describing Christ, Jesus, or Yeshua HaMashiach as a very dark-skinned man. Now, with that being said, uh, in the book of Hebrews, it tells us Christ is, is evident our Lord sprang up from Judah. So, however, you know, we, and I'm not going to get into the, you know, the, 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 the birth and the, you know, Matthew conception, all that of Christ, of which line he came from King David. The bottom line is, however it works out, Christ is from the line of Judah, all right? And if Christ is from the line of Judah, well, what did Judah look like? What did Judah's people look like? And in, 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 in other words, what did the other Hebrew Israelites look like? How were they described in the Bible? Well, let's see. And um, I advise you all to use the King James Version of the Bible. That's the only version that I use because a lot of the newer versions, like the new King James and the new International Version, all these different versions are unreliable because a lot of them have tried to take the word black out or tried to, to take certain things out to try to change the meaning of, of scriptures. And when you take, Like I said a long time ago, not very long, but a, a while back, that you can take out one word and something and change the whole meaning of a scripture. Uh, but clearly, uh, Lamentations, uh, let's, let's get it, with the original Hebrew Israelites, what they look like, okay? There's no, there's no denying this. 
the original Hebrew Israelites were a dark skin or black people. Okay, black. Black is not, you can't confuse black with any other color. I mean, come on, let's be real. Lamentations 4 and 8 says their visage is blacker than a coal. So that lines up with how Christ is described as very, being very black skinned. Uh, his feet as if it had burned, as, as if it was brass burned in a fire. Come on now, it lines up. In Lamentations 4 and 8 says their visage, and visage means face. So you don't have to you don't have to Google that. Look that up in the dictionary. Visage means face. Their face is blacker than coal. Right. That's why I you know, put it in parentheses for you. So you have to look it up. Right. So that that all lines up. Jeremiah 8 and 21 says, I am black. It didn't say I am brown. It didn't say I am light skinned. It didn't say um, any of that. It says I am black. Jeremiah 14 and 2 again. They meaning Hebrews, the Israelites are black. I mean, it gets no more direct than that. Okay, Job 30, 30. My skin is black upon me. All right. Song of Solomon 1 and 5. I am black, <laughs> but comely. Song of Solomon 1 and 6. Look not upon me because I am black. And again, Revelation 1 and 15 to, to hammer the point home. And his feet like fine brass as if it were burned in a furnace. And that describes Christ as really dark or really black, really dark skin, right? So based on scriptural evidence and scriptural proof, we see, and, and another source is not in scripture, we see that Christ was a very dark skinned black man. So how can that Roman Catholic image of who people allege to be Cesar Borgia, how can that image be ref a reflection of what Christ looked like when, when the Bible clearly is, is, is a direct contradiction of that right on to the next segment the audacity of arrogance is what I call it you know they used to always say if you want to hide something from a black man put it in a book well that that's not that's just not that shouldn't just be regulated to a black man a lot of people especially in dealing with the with the Christian church over the centuries you know they, they listen to what a man tells them out of the book they don't even open their Bibles. they don't even read they don't study they don't research they don't study to show themselves approved so, so when you when you're being totally led like that, you can be brainwashed to believe whatever, whatever, whoever's in power wants you to believe. You never open the book, so what do you know? And of course, you know, back when, when, when during, you know, during the transatlantic slave trade, when you know slaves couldn't read, they'd get killed if they were caught reading, right? And that was, and that was, and that was by design to keep them ignorant, to keep them not knowing the truth. I truly believe that a lot of them knew that if, if, if slaves started reading the Bible, they would know who they really were. Right. And maybe maybe get a sense of pride, empowerment to get up out of that situation. I don't know. That's what I personally believe. Right. But the 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 the, the arrogance and the, the audacity of arrogance. Well, we're going to just put this out. We're going to put that false image of Christ because no one no one to be the wise and no one to know any better. No one to question it because we are the Catholic Church. We are in control. We are in power. We are the power structure. This is what we say Christ looked like. Well, doggone it. This is what he looked like. And guess what? For the most part, it worked. But. We've already proven scripturally that what they say, that image of, of, of that they manufactured of Christ is not true scripturally. We've, we've proven that. So there's no denying that. Now, genetically, let's get to that. And then I'm going to end, up the, end off the segment with, it's going to be a, a doozy for, the, for some of you, but it's, it's going to just, just hold on. I'm getting there. Genetically, uh, a real quick summation. I, I, you all know that's my thing, right? I've proven that by, by scripture, using that as the basis, that the children of Israel who went into slavery by way of ships... Uh, those children of Israel, their Y DNA haplotype, including mine, is E1B1A. We are the Negroes that the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary spoke of that said we are not from Ham. Since Ham became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. That would be us or the people, the black or dark skinned people that possesses the E1B1A Y DNA haplotype and women L3E, the female version of E1B1A. So that being said, I've proven that E1B1A is the Negroes, i.e. the children of Israel, right? So if Negroes are E1B1A and the children of Israel, and that includes Judah, right, who's the son of Jacob, and Christ is from that line, then not only did, did I prove that, that Christ is dark skinned from scripture and from another source, but I've proven specifically that Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, was a Negro. You will never hear that anywhere else. Objectively, right? And I say that without passion, without uh, any type of uh, 
you know, malice or any, anything like that. Christ wasn't only a very dark skinned man. Christ, who the world knows as Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, was a dark skinned Negro. So all that Middle Eastern stuff, no. All that olive skin stuff, no. Again, they want to take away the attention and the connotation from who Christ really is and what he really looked like. On to the next segment. You know, I mentioned that um, that 10 percent, right, of representing the the people in, in positions of quote unquote, quote, quote unquote, power that know the truth, but they keep it hidden and want to keep it hidden from the 85 percent. And 85 percent is the people who don't know the truth. And I'm sorry to say to a lot of my brothers and sisters, especially to the ones in Africa and abroad, who really believed uh, that image, that false image manufactured by the Romans. But the Roman Catholics, your, your, your founders, essentially, of, of Christianity, they've known the truth all along. They, they knew the truth, yet they, they perpetuated and, 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 and filled our people with lies over all these years. Um, they have these 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 uh, these Europeans that occupy the Holy Land today are not the original inhabitants. Um, uh, again, my lesson I, I, I covered that this um, that Egyptian you know president said that you know we can never live in peace because you left black and came back white. All of these things, these images you're looking at, you're seeing it firsthand. They know what Christ looked like. Okay, yet. They helped perpetuate the lie to you um, that he was that image that you see that's supposed to be Caesar Borgia, that European image of Christ, right? You have to ask yourself, why? Why would they do that? I mean, how do you feel looking at these images? Like, seriously, like... I mean, it's it's kind of it's 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 messed up. It's kind of hurtful in a way, and it's like, but when when you're ignorant and you don't know, you don't know, right? It's 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 like the blind leading the blind, like Yeshua Hamashiach said, and they're gonna lead you right into a ditch, right? The scripture that comes to my mind it says, "Come, let us cut them off from being the nation, that the name of Israel will be no more in their memory." or their remembrance right I'd say to this day that has worked like a complete charm oh yes sir yes ma'am it has because our people are so to the left you know I think it's unspoken collusion of the quote unquote powers that be right they know the truth I mean look at the images you could you could you know, research it yourself. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't take those pictures. <laughs> you know, I mean, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, those images are worth a lot more. <laughs> okay, sorry, not sorry. So, you know, I don't even have to say any, any more to that. Those images speak for itself. They knew and know the truth. But you have to ask yourself, especially to my brothers and sisters and sojourners even, why would they perpetuate the big lie, <laughs> right? Why would they do that? Now, I don't think it would be right to, to really go into depth as far as what I think in terms of, you know, why they would do that. But I mean, it's, I, th I think it's as clear as day why they would do that. Y'all aren't stupid, right? Y'all aren't slow. So, in, 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 the, in the summation of this lesson, is that Roman Catholic image of the man named Cesar Borgia, is that the model that they use to fashion the image of Christ that many Christians and others accept today? I'm going to leave that for you to decide, right? Yeah, I have an opinion, but, you know, again, I, 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 I stated from the onset that I was going to present this as objectively as possible let's let, let the bible speak let scripture speak right you can't argue people can argue scripture you know all day but what you can't argue 
is genetics. All right? You can say all you want to, but you cannot you cannot argue genetics. And genetics in scripture tells us that Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, was a very dark skinned black Negro. And I would be so for real right now, but even before I had any knowledge of anything that I've presented in this presentation, I knew Christ was black when they said he was murdered for a crime he didn't commit. Huh. Let that sink in, my people. And on that note, I'm going to end this lesson. Until the next one, the next Shabbat, this is Dr. Ephraim signing off, saying hi by Yeshim, Yeshua HaMashiach, Baruch Atah Adonai, for now and forever. Shalom, elect.